I'm on Blue Moon off Kentucky Highway, headed for Rosine, to visit the birthplace of Bill Monroe. I was driving down the Western Kentucky Parkway and saw the exit sign that said Rosine, birthplace of Bill Monroe. Home Place Lane, appropriately named. Let's see what's at the end of the lane. I was in for a pleasant surprise. Not only is the place beautiful, it's also unique. There are a few places in the world when you can pinpoint exactly where a new musical genre began. And this place is like that. I knew this place had a festival, but I wasn't sure what time of year they had it. I lucked out, and I was in for a very pleasant surprise. For this weekend, they were having the annual Jerusalem Ridge Bluegrass Festival here at the home place. So I bought my ticket and paid my camping fee, and I would spend the week and weekend here at this lovely place. Today was Tuesday, and the music festival began on Thursday. So I had a couple of days to explore this area and the home place. I was the second camper to arrive. So I pretty much had the pick of the campsites. I chose a nice shady one. Bill Monroe's father owned 655 acres of land. He also had a sawmill and a coal mine. That was quite an operation. He was an entrepreneur as well as a farmer. The fields and pastures have been overtaken by the forest. This is Jerusalem Ridge, made famous by one of Bill Monroe's instrumentals. Bill loved to go fox hunting with his father and brothers on Jerusalem Ridge. At nighttime, they would sit by the fire and listen to the hounds barking as they chased the fox through the woods. And here it is, the home place. One of his most famous songs is, I'm on my way to the old home. It has been restored and made into a museum, which is open on weekends during the summer months. I'm in the Bill Monroe house. This was the original fireplace. This was the girls' room. He had a couple of sisters. This house has 17 windows and eight doors. And the local lady 
did this portrait of Bill. This is Bill, Charlie, and Birch, his brothers, who are musicians. They're all musicians, but they were professional. This is his father, James Buck Monroe, and Horton School, where Bill attended. And that's him right there, wearing a tie. And this is Bill and Charlie, I think. So this fireplace was in the cabin where Bill was born. The cabin burned down. They built a house around the chimney of the cabin. And Here's the light in the window for Bill's song, The Old Home Place. It's always on for him. There's some souvenirs. There's some hunting dogs there, fox hunting dogs, I guess. This was his mother's room. And she was Uncle Penn's sister and very musically inclined. She sang all the time. I don't know who this is. Maybe that's Bill. So they have uh, his albums on the bed. There's another door, two windows and a portrait of Uncle Penn. Oh, this is Harry. John. Speed. Birch Monroe. Charlie. And Bill. This is Uncle Penn and Clarence Wilson. This is the back side of the fireplace. There's Uncle Penn and somebody else. Uncle Penn played at dancing at William Holmes. Bill was born cross-eyed. And he had trouble singing, he couldn't play sports. He got into music. Uh, he was very close to his mother. Very shy. She died when Bill was 10 years old. His father died when he was 17. This is Bill's bedroom when he was a kid. All right, this is a type of mandolin he may have learned how. And that's a horn for calling the dogs when they're fox hunting. Need you get a picture of the back of that mandolin too. It's so pretty. The back of it? Uh huh. Turn it over. That's a tater bug. Yes. I have one like that. Did you hear this? There was a, a little rural church here, and I don't know where it was, somewhere in the area. Uh -huh. And um, they could, they used to could play stringed instruments. Mm -hmm. Well, all at once they decided no stringed instruments, so they put them all up in the attic. Forgot all about them years ago. So recently they cleaned out their attic and they found those and one of the people who was helping clean out the attic knew that that's what Bill Monroe started playing on. So uh, they gave it to the judge executive here in the county because he's on the board here and uh, brought it down here and that's we have it here now. Yeah, and I so wish his initials were, ch were carved in it but they're not. That's right. <laughs> Bill and the Bluegrass boys were sharp dressers. They wore suits on stage and were dressed like Kentucky planters. Two icons of bluegrass, Bill and Ralph Stanley. Bill had 150 different members of his band over the years. Cleo Davis, who played guitar, was the first.
and the kitchen had to be a favorite area. They didn't have electricity, didn't have a refrigerator or running water. And they cooked with a wood stove. They had a well out back. The kitchen was probably one of the places of socializing as well as dining. It wasn't too large, but I think most of the older kids had moved out. So there were probably six people here. This is the room of Birch and Charlie, his older brothers, who were musicians. When they were dividing up the instruments, Birch got the fiddle, Charlie got the guitar, and Bill was stuck with a little mandolin. When his father died, Bill moved in with Uncle Penn for a couple of years before moving to the Chicago suburb of Whitting, Indiana, to join his two brothers. They lived in Chicago area for five years and had a band that played at dances on the weekend. And then after five years, radio station WLS offered them a job. And so they got into show business that way. Bill and Charlie became a duet and moved to the Carolinas where they played in radio stations. And they received a recording contract and they became famous. This house had a front porch and a back porch. So there was probably lots of music played on both porches. Every wall of the house had a window or a door except for this one. Dinner bell and wash pot. And the stage area is down the hill and back. Thank you.